Hey guys, Dan God of Thunder here. Uh, my doctors and my lawyers have both agreed, and they've been telling me that I should do something other than playing Fall Guys. Try playing Smite, that's still a shit pile. Uh, I'm still very bad at Age of Empires, but uh, I figured I'd give this a try. This is going to be something a little different. This is a tier list of the various games in Fall Guys. There are apparently 25 in total. Uh, some of them I haven't been getting very often, and me going through all of them. I'm going to make one rule. Only one game is going to be an S tier, and only one game is going to be an F tier. Make your predictions now for which two games you think I'm going to vote for those two. Anyway, let's begin. Block Party. Block Party is really good. Um, it's got a lot of the hole in, it's basically hole in the ball a little bit. Um, I think it's really good. It's chaotic. Very little RNG. You want to say like the front third of the screen. I think it's a really good game. I think this is a template for where they need to make more of these sorts of games. So as Mediatronic or Mediatonic, I think it is, um, adds more games to Fall Guys. Block Party is really one they should emulate. This is definitely A tier. Gate Crash. Gate Crash is okay. I don't really hate Gate Crash. I think it's all right. Uh, I really like the racing type of games. I think that's really the core of everyone's memorable moments in Fall Guys. Gate Crash is probably one of the weaker ones just because of the way the gates work. And But it's not RNG. There is a, there is a global timer and they do behave predictably. It's just a matter of dealing with all the other assholes. Gate Crash is a solid B. Out of all of the... Opening mini games, I think door out of all the opening games, I think DoorDash is probably my least favorite. Um, this is one of the only ones where it's possible to get completely incomprehensibly fucked by randomness. If you're on the side of the map and it's just like three doors are all closed, you could just do no fault of your own, be way behind and get eliminated through that. Um, so I don't like that RNG element, but they do keep it towards the beginning. And other than that, there's really not a whole lot of skill. It's just a matter of being lucky. And I think that makes for a relatively poor game. I think DoorDash is a D, and it's easily the worst race. Egg Scramble. Egg Scramble's a pain in the ass. Um, I always seem to be on teams made up of idiots. That seems like my smite career. Um, I'm not the best at Egg Scramble. That's definitely one I don't think I'm very good at. I think it has its place. These sorts of like hoarding mini games are okay. I don't love them, but I don't hate them. I think Egg Scramble's probably one of the weaker ones. Um, I think it's weaker than Hoarders, the other game like this. But overall, I think it's still a C. Fall Ball is fun. Um, I think the only problem I have with Fall Ball is you wind up with unbalanced teams too much and it's relatively difficult to win. If you're on a side of 4v5 and you're the 4, good luck. Uh, the other problem with Fall Ball is, and although if this is not so much a problem, it's just kind of a feature, so tip, whenever a goal is scored, if you jump at the right time at the very edge of the shadow that falls, you can basically propel a ball into the goal immediately and just keep scoring infinitely. Um, the other team is able to do the same thing, but just an abusable little trick, especially if enough people are coming back to play defense and can't get to the middle in time. So I like to play midfield for the most part in fall ball and take advantage of that. I really like the game. I think it does have some problems with the, some of the mini games like that have problems. I don't think it's flawless. Fall Mountain, I think, is the best of the finale games. I think it's way better than Royal Fumble. It's way better than Hexagon. Fall Mountain, I think, is the core of what the, the mini game finales should be fall mountain has the it's the i think because the races to me are the core piece of fall guys having the final rate having the final game be a race i think is makes the most sense fall mountain for me is an easy a slime climb slime climb slime climb is pretty good the only thing that makes it a little bit odd is that it's not a race against other players. It's a race against the clock. Um, take your time with it if you're less than trying to get the first place thing, especially nowadays with more people having played this enough and finding new ways to entertain themselves. People are being dicks and pushing people off the course. Uh, so watch out for that.
but they made it so it was only the first certain number of players would get through. I think I'd like Slime Climb more. Otherwise, I think it's a solid game. I think that's the only problem I've got with it. It's an A. Fruit Shoot. It's okay. Fruit Shoot's okay. Um, they make up for an artificially small course with the conveyor belt running the opposite direction. I So it's like kind of eh in that regard. I think it would be better to have a longer course, fruit going down more, and with just, you know, you can get the same effect with it. You can even have multiple spawn points for where fruit drops from. I think that would have been better than putting a conveyor belt there. But it's an okay game. I don't really seem to get fruit shoot very often, but it's all right. It's all right is also what I I think I would describe Hit Parade as. Um, Hit Parade seems to be one where if you make one bad move, especially on the pen, on the wrecking balls coming across, you can get fucked. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think some of it's a little bit boring. The, the wheels, the spinning pieces at the beginning are kind of boring. Um, but that's about all I can say negatively for Hit Parade. It's just I don't think there's anything else that it does particularly well. Hexagon. Hexagon seems to be the most common of finales, and I think the problem I have with Hexagon is that it's just such a different game than everything else. Whereas things like Block Party are, are reaction-based, Fall Ball is head-to-head -head competition, Fall Mountain, also a race. And so, like I said, I think the races are the core of what make Fall Guys great. Hexagon is just more of a, a strategy game where it's outthinking your opponents, outwitting them, coming up with something to deal with them, and it's methodical movement. It's timed. It's, you know, to delay falling or to make sure that other players will fall. It's a strategic game, and I think that's good. It just doesn't feel like any of the other 24 games. It's a unique thing. And as a finale only, I don't like that. I think Fall Hexagon, I think, is a B. But I think I'd like Hexagon more if they created other games that complemented the style of play of Hexagon. Whereas Fall Mountain really feels like a much more advanced and final version of Gate Crash and Hit Parade and all the other ones. Hexagon doesn't feel like that and I feel like it needs more of those kinds of games. Hoarders. Hoarders is chaotic fun. It's really, I think, it's it's a cross between Egg Scramble and Fall. Um, I think it's overall, I would call it a B. There's nothing that really stands out about it. I'm never super excited to play it, but I don't mind it. I don't think it's a bad game at all. B to me is, it's good. It's not great, but it's good. Uh, Hoopsie Daisy. I suck at Hoopsie Daisy. But I think this is another really good, well done game. I like the concept and I think it's actually a hell of a lot of fun to watch and play, even if I suck terribly at it personally. Um, I don't, there's nothing, there's not a lot I can say that's bad about Hoopsie Daisy other than sometimes RNG and it's, I've had a lot of moments where I felt like I was the one who got through, but the game gave it to somebody else, which is weird. And I seem to be on the losing end of those all the time, even though if, like, I'll get through, like, a quarter second beforehand. Jinx is a game I don't have a lot of opinions on. For whatever reason, after as much as I've been playing Fall Guys, I still have yet to get a game of Jinx. Um, I think that'll end as soon as I upload the video and put it on YouTube for the record. But from what I've seen, I don't think it's a very well-designed game. It's kind of like herpes or coronavirus. Oh, well, there goes monetization of the channel that was never there. Um, remember, one take. He lies after he coughed horribly on the first take after 12 seconds. Oh well. The problem I think with Jinx is that it doesn't make intuitive sense. Um, it's a lot of... I don't even know if I'd say the delay in the inevitable is bad. It just doesn't... Having seen it several times from watching other people, I'm still not 100% sure on how it and the reaction I see with like other friends of mine who've played it once or twice, it's not, oh, that was fun. It's, what just happened? I don't think that makes for a good game. I'm going to change my mind. I mean, there's going to be two games that are getting S ranks, by the way. 
Jump Club, I think, is one of the first that's going to get a, a top rank. Um, Jump Club is interesting. It is a lot of fun to play. There's really nothing that it does wrong, and it creates a lot of hilarious moments watching people flying. Um, I think Jump Club is excellent. I don't. There's nothing I would change about it, and I think that Jump Club is a game where it's almost always your goddamn fault if you lose. It's a lot of fun. I think Jump Club is is an is an amazing mini game. I wish I got it more. I think this is this would be a lot of fun. I think a smaller, faster spinning version of it, maybe with like three pillars, one high, medium, and low that could all hit you. I think jump like a fast version of Jump Club like that would make an excellent finale game. They need to get on that. Uh, jump Showdown. That's one I've actually have not even seen. Jump Showdown. I don't have an opinion on that one because I don't know what that one is. That's really interesting. Huh. Perfect match. Perfect match is awful. If this is the only game out of the whole list that I think that they should really get rid of. Perfect match is boring. Um, you look for the players where everyone's conjugating and you win. That's it. Uh, you don't even have to memorize it. I go out of my way not to learn the patterns. And just play from there. And there's nothing to perfect match. It doesn't eliminate anyone. It's not fun. It's tedious. It's not interesting. It doesn't create any entertaining moments. Perfect match can fuck off. I don't think perfect match should be exist should exist as a game. Sorry. Sorry if you're like to all three of you who like it. Rock and roll. Rock and roll is okay. Um, there are problems with it. There's always the uneven team problem, which is inherently a bad thing. Um, the other thing I don't really like is the teams aren't weighted the same. And by that, I mean blue is often under attack by both yellow and red in this game. Uh, yellow starts on the left side, red starts on the right side, and blue is in the center. So whenever players on either red or yellow are playing defense at the second half of rock and roll, the first color they run into is blue, which means that blue has to fend off two people at all times. Now the counterpoint is that yellow and red have the wolf, which can work against them, but I don't think that's enough to compensate for everyone fucking with blue. Because um, you don't have to fuck with someone very much in rock and roll and blue has a split between two different colors where both colors are going to naturally want to go after blue because all you want to do is not be last most of the time rock and roll has some good things going on i think it is pretty cool but there's a lot of things that make me think that there, it's just kind of problematic at times rock and roll to me is a c just because of the imbalances in between the teams that occur all the time and the one that can't be avoided as it is right now with blue. I think the way to improve rock and roll is to not have the second section and have it entirely be just three separated teams. And so it's your own teamwork that is the final determinant. I think that's how they should do it because of how that three lane system is built. Rollout. Rollout is fun. Um, the trick to rollout is don't fuck up and don't move too much. Move as little as you can and also tilt your cam turn your camera around to the sides because they have two televisions and those are always at um, those are always pointed at the highest point in the sky. So that's where you want to be. You want to be where um, as close to that as possible and that way it gives you an idea if you're about to fall off. I think rollout's pretty simple, but these kinds of games, I think maybe another good finale would be a much more difficult version of rollout. I think that would be a good way to go about it. Dizzy Heights. Dizzy Heights is okay. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think Dizzy Heights is fun, albeit not particularly memorable. Dizzy Heights is a B. I can't really say anything about it. It's fine. It's a good race. My advice to you, by the way, is to never fight 
the dials. Um, the spinning wheels, it's always better to go with them, even if it means you run the long way around. It's usually one of the, it's only the first two rounds. So generally, uh, there's going to be enough people making mistakes that you can get through, even if with optimal movement. So there you go. Royal Fumble. I think Royal Fumble is probably the worst of the mini games for the finale. It's one of three. They should add some more. Um, just because a lot of it is dependent on if you're the one who starts with it. That gives you a very big advantage. Um, not to say that Fall Mountain with its positioning is flawless, but I think Royal Fumble, it has the biggest impact. Um, especially when it feels like... It, where you're dealing with lag, you're dealing with latency and ping issues, where like someone's like a body length away and still steals the tail when you can't do the same. Very frustrating. Um, it always feels a little bit like an anticlimactic way to choose the winner as well. Um, so I think it's good that it's somewhat rare. I think Royal Fumble is easily worse than Hexagon, easily worse than Fall Mountain. Kind of torn between C and D. I'm honestly inclined to say that it's D. Seesaw, everyone's least favorite game. This is probably the most infuriating game um, if you're dealing with a bunch of idiots. <laughs> it's a very, very hit or miss sometimes. I think it's one of the worst. It's not as bad as DoorDash because I think there is ample strategy and you can get some fun moments out of it, unlike DoorDash where it's just there. Um, and you can get a lot of entertainment watching other people play. So I think that's points in Seesaw's favor. But uh, I think that's that's kind of the way I look at that. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking Jump Showdown is a much more advanced version of Jump Club. That's what I was thinking with the, the spinning in the opposite directions. So I'll go back to that in a moment. Uh, um, Seesaw, it's a C for me. It's not awful. People really hate Seesaw just because they have to deal with idiots and RNG sometimes. By RNG, I mean you can't predict other players' behavior and people are idiots. Um, it's not my favorite. I do think it's an okay game. I do think it should stay. Jump Showdown, however, if that's what I think it is, and I'm the most positive, it's just a much more advanced version of Jump Club. Definitely an S. Three games, I guess, in there. Tail Tag. This is the uh, half you start with the tail, half of you don't. Be the ones with the tail at the end. It's okay. Um, I don't think it's that great of a game i would call it a c um the one trick i would have is that if you have a tail uh it's not a bad idea to get yourself batted across the stage with a hammer and that's always funny uh so i would i would go ahead and do that i think that's a very fun thing to do other than that like i i understand why people don't like these hunt mini games as much and i don't enjoy them as much either um, but I don't think they're so egregiously terrible that they need to go. Team Tail Tag, I think, is the best version of the, these events. Um, fewer people get eliminated. But there is a little more of randomness and cooperation of your team and their skill as well. I find being on the bottom on the conveyor belts when I don't have a tail to be the best way to play it. That way I can peel away and go after someone uh, that drops down with a tail. And when I have a tail, don't stay on the bottom, stay on the top. Uh, jump dive to avoid the hammers uh, across the corners and stay safe that way. That's my advice if you're playing that. Tiptoe. Tiptoe is weird. It's a little bit like a hexagon, but what it always just seems to devolve into is a bunch of people playing very nervously and then everyone simultaneously crapping their pants and running for the goal like their life depends on it because it does. Uh, remember that there is a one tile wide gap I've <laughs> lost on tiptoe before because of that. Um, it's just a lot of nervous tension, especially because if you're one of the idiots that falls towards the very end while trying to figure out what the path is. You can't win at that point because someone else is going to be like, well, oh, he went one direction and he died. I'm going to go the opposite direction and be safe. And then find the. The path that way. I think tiptoe is a D. It's interesting. I don't seem to get it very often, and I think if I got it a lot, I would hate it more. Uh, but it's otherwise okay. 
Last one, Whirly Gig. Whirly Gig is easily my favorite of the opening courses. It's an S. More courses need to be designed with the Whirly Gig in mind. There's only one little choke point I don't like when you have to jump onto the little crash pads or cling to the wall uh, to climb it, pull yourself up. The last section, getting uh, with the pole spinning and the little windmill thing at the very end, that whole sequence is brilliant. The fact that there is a high risk, high reward shortcut is brilliant. I think Whirly Gig is my favorite course of the, in the entire game. It's not particularly close, um, and I think they need to make more like this. This is also the funniest to spectate. Just watching people get knocked by the frickin' poles and belted across the whole map. It's great! What isn't there to love about Whirly Gig? Anyway, this is my tier list for Fall Guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Uh, make sure you like, make sure you share, subscribe, do all the things, because if I can get to 1,000 subscribers, I do get to monetize the channel. Thank you for watching. Take care. Catch you all next time.